Welcome to the pond. Today we're going to be talking about indicator species and what they are and what they look like here at the pond. Indicator species are a way for us to judge a body of water's health in relation to pollution. While all of these species will show up in a healthy pond, it's important to note that some species are less tolerant to pollution and will start to fade away as more pollution enters the body of water. Now, some of these indicator species are very intolerant to pollution. Some examples are newts, salamanders, and frogs. We have some other species that are moderately intolerant, which means they can deal with a little bit of pollution, but not a whole lot. Some examples of those are caddisfly larvae, crane fly larvae, and giant water bugs. Our ones that are fairly tolerant are freshwater snails, our water boatmen, and the ones that are tolerant are our leeches, our mosquito larvae, and our water scorpions. At the pond, we use nets to catch critters that we then put into buckets filled with water. We can use smaller containers to look at each animal individually and can hold some above water without harming them. At the end of the day, we release all of them back into the pond. The first animal we'll look at is a mayfly nymph. Mayfly nymphs are easily recognizable by their three tails, which resemble the shape of the letter M for mayfly. They have six legs towards the front of their body and feathery gills that are located between their legs and their tails. During the adult stage of their life cycle, they can live up to 24 hours or as short as 30 minutes. Because of this, in some languages, they are called the one day fly. Mayflies are one of the organisms that are intolerant to pollution. We found a few mayflies today, which indicates that our pond has very little pollution. We found many animals that are moderately intolerant to pollution, such as cranefly larvae, water tigers, and many different caddisfly larvae. Caddisflies are omnivores and eat a wide diversity of food. They may scavenge on dead fish, feed on plant matter, or scrape their food off of rocks. As larvae, caddisflies encase themselves with debris that are found in the pond, such as sand, pebbles, and tiny sticks. This casing protects their otherwise fragile and fluid-filled bodies. There are approximately 12,000 different species of caddisfly, and each one tends to use different materials for their cases. Artists have raised caddisflies and given them unique materials like gold and pearls to create ornate cases that they then preserve after the caddisfly has undergone metamorphosis and become an adult. We found two different species of caddisflies today, indicated by their different types of casings. Today we found two organisms that are fairly tolerant to pollution, freshwater snails and water boatmen. Freshwater snails are gastropods, a class of animals that are a type of mollusk. Snails are known for their shells and a large muscular foot that helps them move along underwater surfaces. Some have gills, whereas others have lungs, and some have both. Most snails feed on algae. Water boatmen have dark, streamlined bodies and hind legs that are fringed with hairs that are shaped like oars of a boat, hence the name water boatmen. Most are herbivores, feeding on aquatic plants and algae. We also found a few organisms that are tolerant to pollution, like this large water scorpion. This water scorpion has a long and slender body resembling stick insects that you might find on land. It has a long breathing tube at the end of its abdomen, which it projects out of the water like a snorkel to get air to breathe. It uses its strong front legs to seize the variety of aquatic bugs that it eats, and it has a special organ that helps it orient itself underwater. We found indicator species from each category of the biotic index, but mostly organisms that are moderately intolerant to pollution. What do you think that this means for the health of our pond? One of the most common sources of pollution in ponds comes from surface runoff from places like farms and cities. Rainwater can carry pollutants like pesticides and herbicides, sediments, excessive organic material, heavy metals, and oils over the surface of the earth and through groundwater that flows through the soil and into ponds, lakes, and streams. Preventing pollution takes a lot of people, including large corporations, working together, but there are things that we can do at home to prevent pollution in our local bodies of water. We can use environmentally friendly household cleaners, use a broom or rake to clean up yard clippings instead of a hose, or pick up after our pets and dispose of their waste in garbage cans. Can you think of anything else you can do to help prevent water pollution? The pond at Arkyla is thriving with life, from large birds to tiny insects, tall trees, and small clusters of algae. 
Every season, the life here is continually growing and changing, and we're working hard to keep our pond healthy by testing our water quality daily, stewarding all of the bodies of water here at camp, and teaching people like you the importance of keeping our planet healthy.